This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We end today's show looking at two stories about occupied Western Sahara. Morocco has occupied Western Sahara since 1975 in defiance of the United Nations and international law. Over the past four decades, thousands of Western Sahara's indigenous people, the Sahrawi, have been tortured, imprisoned, killed and disappeared while resisting the Moroccan occupation. On Thursday, the Spanish Film Academy, which gives the Goya Awards, the Spanish equivalent of the Oscars, gave its Social Justice Award to the Western Sahara International Film Festival and its film school, Abedin Khaid Salah, known as Fi Sahara. The festival takes place in the Sahrawi refugee camps in southwestern Algeria. Last month celebrated its 17th edition of the film festival. The film school is training the first generation of Sahrawi filmmakers who are pioneering Sahrawi-made cinema, a brand new art in Western Sahara. Their short films now tour the world, giving voice to Sahrawi refugee youth who were born in exile and are still awaiting a UN promised referendum on self determination that it would allow them to return to their land, Western Sahara. The festival and the film school operate in one of the world's remotest and toughest environments in the heart of the Sahara Desert. This is Tiba Charaf speaking at the awards ceremony in Madrid, director of the Fi Sahara Film Festival and Film School. On behalf of the Sahrawi refugees who dedicate our lives to cinema, we are very grateful and truly proud of the men and women who work in the seventh art, who show us daily that those playing fictional roles are far more committed than those who play their real selves. We thank the organizations and the Spanish film community. This festival, born from a shared dream between the Sahrawi people, Spanish filmmakers, and solidarity organizations, would not exist without you. That was Maria Carrion. She is the executive director of the Western Sahara International Film Festival, known as Fi Sahara, uh, also former Democracy Now! producer. She's joining us from Madrid, Spain. Uh, Maria, congratulations on this remarkable award that uh, you won this year, the Fi Sahara Film Festival and the film school in the refugee camps of Algeria. Um, Talk about the significance of this moment. Thank you so much, Amy, for having me on. It was such an honor to receive the highest award that the Film Academy gives for social justice pro pro uh, projects. Um, and it's very significant because um, the conflict in Western Sahara is a silenced uh, conflict. It's a forgotten conflict. And in Spain, our own government has taken um, the side of Morocco, which occupies Western Sahara, over uh, the people that it once colonized, the Sahrawi people. And it, the, as a result also, um, there's a complete media blockade. Uh, and for instance, Spanish public um, TV and radio journalists are banned from going to the camps to cover anything to do with Western Sahara. So the fact that the day before we left, for the festival, we got the news and it was made public that the Film Academy uh, gave us this award, forced Spanish media to cover it because they can't leave the Film Academy um, from being covered. Um, it's, uh, it's a festival that celebrates Sahrawi identity, Sahrawi culture, that uh, decolonizes the Western Sahara culturally. Uh, that celebrates uh, what Sahrawi people are about through film, through music, um, and through community. Um, I wanted you to talk about the significance, also, of what we're about to play. Sahrawi activists came to Sharm el Sheikh. We just came back from Egypt to the UN film to the UN climate summit to talk about their plight and the, what they call the greenwashing of uh, uh, by Morocco. It's uh, it's very important that Sahrawi voices find a space at COPS uh, because they're so excluded from international events and by the United Nations itself. And so to have Mahfoud and his colleague there to, to talk about 
what Morocco is doing, you know, Morocco has built it, its uh, reputation of being one of the greenest countries in Africa, but is doing so at the expense of Sahrawi people because it's uh, basically powering the occupation through its green projects. So it's incredibly significant that um, they were able to be there and, and uh, speak to the media and also um, get to know the activists uh, that were there from around the world, because most people don't know about Western Sahara. Well, I want to thank you very much, Maria, for joining us. Uh, final thoughts on what you think are the possibilities of the recognition of um, this occupied territory uh, around the world? Well, the possibility of, of actually getting the voice out that this is a colonization, a decolonization that's pending, the more projects um, like Free Sahara and others um, ma that manage to bring a, what the world's attention to this matter, the more chances um, there are that governments will be pressured into doing the right thing. The issue is in the hands of the Security Council, the UN Security Council, which promised a referendum on self-determination, is not doing so because it's not getting enough pressure. So I think that if we can uh, all sort of um, make sure that the world knows about this conflict through culture, arts, politics, and many other ways, the better chance the Sahrawi people have of resolving it and going back to their homeland. Well, Maria Carrion, again, congratulations on this award from the Spanish Film um, Institute, uh, the equivalent of the Academy that gives out the Oscars. Maria Carrion is executive director of FI Sahara, the Sahara International Film Festival. As we continue to look at occupied Western Sahara, we turn now to the Sahrawi climate activist Mahfoud Beshri. He is a member of the campaign Western Sahara is Not for Sale. We've just returned from Egypt. I spoke to him last week at the UN Climate Summit in Sharm el Sheikh. So Western Sahara is a non self governing territory considered by the UN as a pending decolonization. It's occupied by Morocco since 1975. And uh, since then, Morocco has been like perpetuating its military occupation of Western Sahara, where Saharaus in the occupied territories are suffering from uh, violations of human rights. And the other part of the Sahara people are being uh, like refugees in uh, southwest of Algeria in, in, in refugee camps. So despite the uh, different resolutions by the United Nations that uh, call for, this, for the right of the Sahrawi people to self-determination, this uh, has not been possible because Morocco has been blocking this and perpetuating its more, uh, military occupation and including now greenwashing this occupation by uh, like uh, 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 speaking uh, about uh, green projects uh, in Morocco, including, unfortunately, the occupied territory of, of Western Sahara. So, uh, uh, basically, this, uh, the people of Western Sahara is still waiting the, to exercise the right to self-determination. This has not been happening. And unfortunately, uh, what Morocco is, is doing is happening without uh, any consequences at the international level. So, the international community is turning a blind eye on what's happening in in Western Sahara, and all, the only thing we are demanding and we are asking for is justice for the people of Western Sahara. So the Sahrawi campaign has long accused Morocco of theft of its natural resources. Can you talk about what exactly it's doing? You say they not only talk about their own projects in Morocco, which you don't criticize, but they're talking about occupied lands and using the conference to greenwash this. Absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, what, what Morocco has been doing, but uh, also what the UNF Triple C has uh, accepted so far, is that uh, Morocco includes programs, projects, and plans done in occupied Western Sahara. The UN officially uh, uh, has no recognition of any sovereignty of Western Sahara over uh, of Morocco over Western Sahara, and the, the nationally determined contributions of Morocco, the NDCs, include in legally the, the, the territory of Western Sahara. So this is one of the objectives that of why we are coming on to this COP, to basically speak up about this and to say that UNF Triple C is basically violating uh, the international law by accepting the indices of Morocco uh, 
including projects uh, done in uh, in, in, Western, in occupied uh, Western Sahara. So Morocco, together with some international companies like Siemens, but also Enel and uh, some other companies, are uh, plundering Western Sahara natural resources, are doing uh, uh, renewable energy projects in Western Sahara, despite, uh, uh, the, despite the different resolutions by the United Nations that states that the, uh, the territory of Western Sahara is a non-self-governing territory, and despite even the, inter the, the European Court of Justice different resolu resolutions when it says that there is no sovereignty of Morocco over Western Sahara, and that uh, Morocco and Western Sahara are two different uh, distinct uh, territories. So there is also extractivism that's happening in Western Sahara by like plundering the phosphate mining and other resources like, mm -hmm. like fish, where Morocco also is using the resources and the wealth of the Sahara people without any consent of the Sahara people, which is what the, uh, the courts uh, has been uh, asking for, in the Western, consent of the Sahara In Western people. Sahara, phosphates are w one of the largest resources in the world come from Western Sahara. And also, if you can talk about the sand itself. I mean, Morocco is exporting sand to the Canary Islands in Spain, for example, but to other parts as well, despite that this is a non-renewable uh, 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 wealth and that it belongs only to the Sahrawi people, but Morocco is getting a lot of profits from uh, uh, selling out this uh, this sand and also large amounts of, of fish and phosphate, as as we said. And this is why why what we have been campaigning against in Western Sahara is not for sale and other Sahrawi platforms. We are asking these companies to not to not to be complicit with this military occupation. To the, uh, and we ask them that their participation in exploiting uh, the Western Sahara natural resources is basically participation in this human rights abuses that the Sahara people are suffering in, in the occupied territories. So if you can talk more about, as we wrap up, uh, the goals, uh, for example, um, even right here, how you highlight the case of the Sahrawi people. How do you want to be represented at these cops? Unfortunately, UNFCCC doesn't uh, doesn't doesn't give a chair for the Sahrawis themselves. So we have to find a way, uh, our ways to come through other international organizations to be part of the of uh, of, co of COP. And how? How is, for example, the European Union and other entities and countries dealing with uh, resources that you say are stolen from the Sahrawi people? How yeah. successful have you been in uh, getting them to stop buying them? I think the main, one of the main achievements of Sahrawis have been at the uh, European Court of Justice different resolutions from 2015 until late, last one, September 2021, when it says that the European Union and Morocco uh, could not engage in a commercial agreement that in involves Western Sahara because the, uh, the European Court of Justice considers the Western Sahara territory as separate and distinct from, the, from the, the, the Moroccan territory. And this is one of the main achievements. However— Sahrawi climate activist Mahfoud Beshri with Western Sahara is not for sale. I spoke to him at the UN Climate Summit in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt. To see all of our coverage of the COP um, in Sharm el-Sheikh, as well as our coverage from Cairo, Egypt, you can go to democracynow.org. Also there, you can watch our documentary, Four Days in Occupied Western Sahara, Africa's Last Colony. That does it for our show. Democracy Now! is produced with Renee Fels, Mike Perk, Dina Gozder, Messiah Rhodes, Nermeen Sheikh, Marie Tarasena, Tammy Warrenoff, Tarina Nadura, Sam Alkoff, Tamari Astudio, John Hamilton, Rabbi Karen, Hani Massoud, and Mary Conlin. Our general manager is Julie Crosby. Special thanks to Becca Stelly, John Randolph, Paul Powell, Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nagara, Hugh Grant, Dennis Moynihan, David Prude, and Dennis McCormick. Also, thanks to Honey Masood and Sharifa Bokadus. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.